I, I was at the first meeting of Rasan and Mingus. My dad drove him huh. from our, cause we lived on Central Park West across the park. Mingus was around the same street level, but on the other side of the park. He said, so I forget how you get through. There's certain roads that go from yeah, east yeah. west to east. Mm -hmm. You can get through. Um, and we took him there, obviously, because Roland was blind since he was two. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't drive, although he wanted to. He kept he always tried to get someone to let him drive. Yes, <laughs> fortunately, nobody did. I yeah, mean, yeah. But like that Al Pacino in yeah, that movie. Yeah, Scent of a Woman. Yeah, That's he does. Thinking he about, yeah. a couple of blocks in the Ferrari. Yeah, yeah. right. I'm sure R Roland would have loved it, man. He, he, he really wanted to. If anybody could have pulled it off besides Al, I think Roland would have got it. Yeah, for but, sure. But uh, anyway, so we drove him, and that was an amazing meeting. Um, the first thing when he started playing, he hit three horns at once. Yeah. And when Mingus heard the sound, he fell off the piano stool. <laughs> and he was close to 300 pounds at the time. So when he hit the ground, the, the paintings on the wall shook. Yeah. But he liked it. That yeah, was, yeah, it yeah. made him jump, you know. But then he picked up the bass, and it was challenge time. And that's what those guys used to do. They were hard. They, you know, they, they're out to kill you, to embarrass you. People think, I'm hard. No, I'm softy, man. Sure. I'm a what, what do you mean? Give me an example. Tempo. Me Oh, okay. He said, okay, I, I, what was the I forget the tune. It might have been Get Happy. But, uh, da -da -ba -da 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 -da. but I'm, the, I'm not exaggerating. The quarter note was... <laughs> so your eighth note was... And Roland went right there. And he's tapping his foot, like, and it's not slowing down. And, and he got through it. That's and amazing. Mingus smiled and said, you got the gig. All right. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's put him, trip. The put him to the test. Yeah. Yeah. They used to do that. They challenge. Bird is famous for doing that shit. People come in and sit in, and all of a sudden they do the tune Cherokee and B or something. Put right. some really hard key or F sharp that it's never played in. You know. Uh huh. Um, you know to cut out the pretenders. You know. The, for sure. The, the wannabes. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. George Coleman was famous for doing that. Played crazy fast tempos and really hard keys. Um, yeah, it's kind of, there was a, I, I'm not a, I don't approve of it, but it was part of the culture. Sure. Yeah, I, I don't recommend it, uh, anything. I'm, that's one thing that I'm glad has not carried through. But it was interesting to watch it, and it definitely strengthened people up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I was playing with Rasan in Philadelphia, and I was just a kid. I, I was talking about being in over my head. Um, I was in a black club in the hood, too. I was the only white person in the joint, I think. But Dave Liebman, who was my earliest playing friend, but mm -hmm. he wasn't the great Dave Liebman then, he was just a beginner, you know? Sure. Um, was visiting Philly to look at colleges. I think he was thinking about going to Temple University, I believe that's in Philly, you know? Mm -hmm. and, so, and I happened to be playing there, so he's gonna come see his buddy play with Rasan in the, in the club. And I remember, um, so I he came backstage during the break and I said, Roland, this is my good friend David. He's a young saxophone player, he's a beginner saxophone player. Uh, wondering if he could sit in with you. And Roland said, yeah, sure, yeah, no problem. And he got on the stage, and I don't know how he knew, but Roland was a very psychic, extremely sensitive cat. He, sa he asked Liebman, he said, how many Coltrane records you got? And Levy is honest, he ain't gonna bullshit, you know. And Levy said, I don't know, 40, 45. And this I knew, uh-oh, we're in trouble. He goes, he goes, how many of my records you got? Uh, oh, he's not honest. So, Three, you know. Okay. And he, he, I remember he called all the things you are, modulate up a half step every four bars. And he, again, he's tearing it up, right? Yeah. Liebman solo. No, he's like humiliated, but you know, it's cold, it's cold. Sure. It's cold. We, we used to make joke about that sometimes he, he, he played the saxophone like Venus de Milo. Yeah. <laughs> had no arms. <laughs> <laughs> or like you're in a straight jacket, you know. Yeah. Um, but, wow, you know, else. but Liebman being the kind of cat that he is, he said, okay, you know, to, to himself, he said, okay, you got me, but I'm going to go, I'm going to learn every tune in every key. And yeah. if anybody pulls that shit on me again, I'll be ready. And yeah. he, I, I'm, you know, he he became a bona fide uh, jazz master and just master of music. I mean, he really knows knows his stuff. I mean, he's yeah, a scholar, and he worked really hard, you know, to become great. Sure. Um, but yeah, people used to do that, man. That's that's got kind of, that's cold blooded. Right? <laughs> that's cold, man. Yeah. Right. That's in front of a whole audience of people too. Right. You know? Sure. 
that's something else. 